Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating the standard deviation using Microsoft Excel. So I have here some fictitious data on the left. I have an independent variable named group. It has two levels, control and treatment. And then I have a post-test that has a series of scores. And I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate the standard deviation in two different ways. One, by going through all the steps of the actual equation to calculate standard deviation, and one by using the built-in function in Excel. Standard deviation is a measure of dispersion in a data set. So a high standard deviation means that scores are more spread out, and a low standard deviation means that scores are grouped more tightly together. Now, both of the methods that I'll be using will end up in the same result. That is, they'll both calculate the standard deviation accurately. However, I believe it's important in order to gain a good conceptual understanding of what the standard deviation represents, it's important to go through the steps in the equation one by one. And after seeing all those steps, you will not only know how to calculate the standard deviation, but will have a firm understanding of what the term means in a mathematical sense. So let's take a look at the equation. We can see on one side, of course, we have standard deviation. And you can see it's the square root of the sum of the scores minus the means squared. So you have the score minus the mean, that's squared. You take the sum of all those and divide by n minus 1. Now it's important to note a couple things here. One is that I'm calculating a sample standard deviation. If you were calculating a population standard deviation, it would be just n. So n is the count, n is the number of observations. We use n minus 1 for sample and n for population. Another thing I want to point out is if we had the same equation on the right side except without the square root, that would be equal to the variance. So the variance is the standard deviation squared, or you could look at it as the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Both statements are true. So let's start moving through the steps we'll need to calculate this equation. So first we're going to need the mean for each group. So you can see you have a control group and a treatment group. So we want the mean to be specific to each level of the independent variable. So we'll use average, the average function for that. So it's equal sign, average. I'm going to select just the scores associated with the control group. You can see the mean is 47.3. So I'm going to mouse over the actual range, each element, and press F4 to make that an absolute reference. That way I can autofill it all the way down and they'll still be 47.3. So for the treatment group, I'm just going to autofill one more and then move into the range and then just drag it down so it's highlighting just the scores associated with the treatment group. You see the mean for the treatment group is 40.35. And if I autofill this, it's going to be the same for each score. And the reason that we are lining it with each case, even though it's the same value, is so we can conduct the next calculation, which is the square of the score minus the mean. So let's start with the score minus the mean. So it will be equal sign, and I'm going to start by opening parentheses. You have the score, and I'm going to subtract the mean. I'm going to close the parentheses, and then you want to click on Shift 6, which is the caret, and then 2. So that squares the value in the parentheses, which of course is the score minus the mean. You can see for the first case here, we have 
39.69. So I can autofill this all the way down. So the next step is to calculate what's called the sum of squares. And as the name suggests, it's simply a sum of all these squares. In this case, just from the control group I'm going to use. So there'll be equal sign, sum, and then I'm going to select all the squared values of the score minus the mean for the control group. So the sum of squares is 1042.2. So as you can see from the formula, we're going to need to count the values. Now we happen to know that there's 20 values here, uh, so we could just put in 20 as we calculate the variance. But there's another way, uh, the count function. So for variance, we're going to start off with the value, uh, the sum of squares value. And then we're going to divide by the count of all the squares of the scores minus the means for the control group. And then, of course, we're going to subtract 1. Now you see the variance is uh, almost 55. So let's compare this variance to the variance that Excel can calculate in one function, which I'll put down here. So the equal sign, this will be a sample variance. So it'll be var.s. And remember, here you want to select the actual post test scores. And you can see the output is the exact same value that I calculated up here, just short of 55. So from this point, the standard deviation is fairly straightforward to calculate. It's the square root of the variance. So square root is SQRT. That's the function in Excel. And we'll just select variance. We have 7.4 as the standard deviation, as the sample standard deviation for the control group. And let's compare that to the function in Excel, which would be the sample standard deviation, which is stdev dot s. And again, we're going to select the scores here. And as you can see, it produces the exact same result, 7.4. So as you can see, it's much faster to use the built-in function. But to have a good conceptual understanding, as I mentioned before, it's good to know all the steps and how to calculate uh, a standard deviation and, of course, a variance and sum of squares as well. If you wanted to shift this to a population standard deviation, uh, in this formula here, uh, you would not subtract 1. All the other formulas here would be the same. So just variance, you wouldn't subtract the 1. And, of course, for the built-in function, uh, for variance, instead of var.s, it would be var.p. And instead of stdev.s, it would be stdev.p for the population standard deviation. I hope you found this video on calculating the standard deviation in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.